Regardless of how long you spend in Madrid, my first recommendation when you get there is to first explore the central hub of the city near the stations of Sol and Opera. This immediately gives you a sense of Spanish culture and architecture, and everything is within walking distance. Some main landmarks and sites to see here are the Plaza Mayor, El Retiro Park, Royal Palace of Madrid, and Temple of Debon. My second recommendation after seeing these sites is to book a flamenco show. The history behind flamenco originates with the Roma people, or gypsies, of southern Spain, in the region of Andalusia. Several instruments can be used, but it usually surrounds around the guitar and involves one or more dancers. I absolutely love flamenco. The beats and rhythms are so lively, and both the dance and song has so much passion. It's fast paced, loud, and physically demanding, so it's definitely really easy to stay engaged. Although I feel like many folks might recommend that you stay in Madrid if you only have one or two days, I think it's very important to go and explore the old city of Toledo, which was once Spain's ancient capital before Madrid. The city is even older and even more ancient than Madrid, which you can see in the architecture as you walk through the streets. One significant aspect about the city is that it contains influences from Islam, Judaism and Christianity. So you'll see these influences all throughout the city. You can get to Toledo by bus, car, or train, but by far the easiest and the cheapest, I believe, is by train. There's a high-speed rail connecting Madrid to Toledo, starting from the Madrid Atocha station. It is definitely recommended to get here early, not just because it can be kind of confusing to figure out all the trains and the, pla and the platforms, but because the station itself is almost like a botanical garden and could be a point of interest on its own, even without needing to take a train somewhere. The journey is a quick 30 minutes and it dumps you right out in front of the old city of Toledo. I recommend spending about a day here exploring and make sure to get enough rest because you'll be walking the entire day. Old city of Toledo. For food, it can be difficult to find a spot that's not a tourist trap, not too expensive, and without a crazy crowd. But if you look around, there are some hidden gems with some great food. Let's kick off the foods to try with a tortilla española. If you're living in the Americas, one of the first things you think of when you hear tortilla is probably the corn or flour flat tortillas. But a tortilla española, or Spanish tortilla, here refers to this dish of potatoes, olive oil, and eggs. Now the most famous food in Spain, or type of food, one can probably say is tapas. Tapas are little shared plates where you can get a taste of everything. In most restaurants that you find around town, will sell a variety of tapas that you can just order and choose all the things that you want to try. This is actually perfect for foodies like me who want to eat everything and hate ordering just one thing on the menu. Which I really like. So it's just a cool like, tomato soup that basically you blend it and it's so good. What does mama think? It's good. Thank you, Thomas. Bring mama to here. Papas. From Tortilla Española, Gazpacho, Paella, and many other unheard of Spanish delicacies, this is a fun way to try a whole set of traditional dishes. When I travel, I also emphasize not throwing your health out the window. And so I love finding and eating veggies of any kind. Luckily here, you'll be able to find very high quality veggies that are also extremely delicious. If veggies tasted this good in the US, I feel like many more people would be living healthy lifestyles. Last thing to mention about Madrid food is just the quality. And this applies to everywhere in Europe, but the quality of the food and the ingredients is just so good. Let's talk about an important but not the most fun part of any trip, the logistics. Overall, with my recommendations almost anywhere else, if there's a metro system, I highly recommend you take that almost everywhere. They're usually the cheapest option, they're quick, well connected, and really help you get a sense of the city. And in Madrid, this is no exception. If you're flying to Madrid, you'll likely land at the Barajas International Airport. And from there, there are several transfer options to get you to the city center. You can take a bus, taxi, Uber, or of course, my recommendation is by Metro. You can take the 
Line 8 from the airport and get off at the station Nuevos Ministerios, or you can transfer to other lines that'll take you to the center. Everything is basically within walking distance when, once you get to the city center, so you can just make it to one of those stations and go from there, including Plaza de España, Noviciado, Opera, Callao, Sol, Gran Vía, and Acacias. Although a bit difficult to figure out at first, and a little more expensive than other metros that I've seen, I still really enjoyed riding around the Spain metro, as it was clean and pretty quick. Thanks all for coming on this journey with me. I'll see y'all next time. Adiós.